Hello and welcome back to another episode. So today we have Harper's Bazaar, October 2022. And just let me make a general observation real quick. Uh, uh, Glenda Bailey was the editor-in-chief from 2001, I believe, till 2020. And as I said before, I don't understand. I don't know. I'm not in the know is why she left. I don't know if she was terminated or she just decided to retire. I don't know. But anyway, Samira Nasser has picked up in 2020 as the editor-in-chief. And Harper's has fallen quite a bit. But in now I will say this. I think it's Harper's is trying to reshape itself almost into like a vanity fair. And what I mean by that is the photography has markedly fallen off in Harper's Bazaar. The photography and the fashion isn't what it used to be, but now they're trying, I think they're trying to compete with Vanity Fair on the level of writing. So Vanity Fair has some really ex excellent writing. It's left leaning, right? So if you're into the like politically left, it would be right up your alley. Uh, and again, I don't mean that as a, as a jab or, or, or a, you know, a smart aleck comment. I'm just saying it's, it's designed, it's a leftist magazine and the writing is leftist. But here, Harper's is, is doing the same thing. They're, they've gone much more to the writing side of the house and less to the photography side of the house under Samir Nasser's leadership. Okay, so let's get started on the images. So as you saw, the last image from the previous issue, that was just horrible fashion from Louis Vuitton. But here, it's absolutely excellent. So look at this model and look at how wonderful she looks in this wardrobe okay because you have to remember to me women's fashion was always about flattering a woman right it should flatter her physique her her shape and make her look very feminine right just as a man's clothes should make a man look masculine okay it's not rocket science so here you can see some like this cabling right it's almost like a rope or a cable. And being this a high-end fashion house, that might be solid gold. It might be real gold instead of gold-plated. I don't know. But it's just wonderful. Look at the look at the design. Here. Just beautifully done. So that's what I don't understand about LV. Is sometimes it's absolutely trash. The the designs are trash. And sometimes like this, it's more like a Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren is never trash. It always, Ralph Lauren's designs have always made a woman look like a million dollars. So here LV is leaning toward a Ralph Lauren type uh, fashion where it's really quite beautiful. And again, it's, I can appreciate the, this is cardstock. It's a medium cardstock. And this would, you know, this is... It's not really frameable, I can't, I mean, this isn't really Hall of Fame level photography or design, but at least it's a very high print resolution, and it's a me it's a medium card stock, so I do thank LV for that. Okay, and this is another thing that doesn't make any sense at all. So normally, a subscriber cover is substantially different from the newsstand cover. Okay, so let me go and watch the legs. The legs are identical. Look at her arm on the chair. It's identical. Her arm coming across her legs. Identical. The only thing they changed is this is a frontal shot and this is a slight oblique. So what is that, right? Can you imagine that's the difference in the subscriber cover between the newsstand cover? There's a slight turn of the head. Let me go back and forth and I'll show you, you, right, so you can see for yourself. Okay, that's just, that's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Why Samir Nasser would do something that stupid. Okay, here's Fendi. This is cool. This is kind of gladiatorial, right? This almost looks like it would be... Like if a sword, you can imagine a sword coming down, right, and a gladiator deflecting the sword, and it's striking this leather as kind of a protective plate, right, not to, so you don't, the, the person doesn't get cut. 
So this really has kind of a gladiatorial theme to it with this leather. Really well done. And I want you to notice the jeans, how form-fitting, how perfectly tailored, right? Very, and look over here. This is Bella Hadid. And look at how well it, it hugs her waistline and comes down the hips. So, all right, this, that's what I mean about a fashion house flattering a woman. So, Fendi definitely, right, meets the, meets the grade here. This is cool. This is a check pattern. It's repeat throughout. So, there's a check in the shirt right here in this kind of hip plate, in the, in the skirt, in the purse, and in the boots. So, this pattern is repeated throughout. So, you have this uniformity in the pattern and you have this this back this like wall is on a radius that's working the colors are working so this is well done and I don't like this one no her hair look her hair is so flat she's barely made up so I, I'm just not getting this this photo is in complete disagreement okay you have excellent 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 and then right blah so I'm just, it's not making sense. And all these are heavy card stock. So these are all frameable. If you were so inclined, you could take an X-Acto knife, cut any one of these, and hang it in a frame. And these would become, so the, the print resolution is good enough. And the uh, it's on a medium grade card stock. And this is yet another cover. So it's, it's on medium card stock. So there were three covers. So I don't know which was the newsstand cover that that one, the one, the earlier one, or this one. But regardless, it's just Samir Nasser is just not making the grade, in my opinion. So here, this is beautiful. This kind of has a Camilla Akron's feel to it. Well, I've talked about this before. Camilla Akron's, where the camera is way out, and the model is occupying a very small percentage of the real estate just beautiful and again I, I can see reef install in this linear reef install kind of has a, that feel to it here we have Kaya Gerber for Celine this is a wonderful shot really working this is horrible I've seen this going back years and years and I do not I cannot figure it out this is going back to the 60s even why they have a model hunch so they tell her to hunch her back. And it's just a horrible pose. But it's they've been doing it forever. That's why I get a kick out of these photographers who engage in these cliches. Right? Well, it's been done. It looks terrible, but it's been done for 50 years. So let's just keep doing it because, right, that's what I'm supposed to do. It's just no originality whatsoever. What a knucklehead to have that, you know, Kaya Gerber do this. Like she's the hunchback of Notre Dame, you know, it's just stupid. But that's Eddie Slama. No love. I, I'll be totally honest. I have no love whatsoever for Eddie Slama. Okay, Beyonce looking really good for Tiffany. But one thing here is the print resolution is terrible. So this could have been a really, really wonderful image if they would have just specified a better print resolution same here this could have been a magnificent shot if i mean like a if they would have now can you imagine this is regular paper and it's poorly printed so imagine this photo on heavy cardstock with a high print resolution cut it out that goes on your wall that stays on your wall for years and years and years it's timeless but they missed missed an opportunity. Okay, this is horrible. This is garbage. Terrible. Mew Mew, you know what's strange too? Mew Mew used to do really well in these magazines. And another thing about Mew Mew, what they've changed, is when they did a shoot down in this left corner, they would always put the metadata for the shoot. It would say the dates like say if it was a three or four day shoot they would have like June 25th through June 29th and they would have the location let's say if it was Milan, Italy 
and they would they would have about four lines in here describing right like a 40,000 foot view of the shoot and that metadata was really awesome and they've eliminated that they're not they're not putting the metadata in here anymore and look at the, the, the disquality of this photography it's horrible so Mew Mew has fallen quite a bit so here we have Sharon Stone for Dolce & Gabbana beautifully done these are always shot on location in Italy so it appears here this is some type of restaurant in, in Italy and look at the decor look at the ceiling and the walls just beautifully beautifully done Kendall Jenner for Jimmy Choo when I first saw this it reminded me of the movie Westworld with Yul Brenner and Josh Brolin and they go right it's about these two guys who go to this theme park and they had three it was Roman world medieval world and West world but what happens is one of the robots goes crazy Yul Brenner is this robot right and the programming goes crazy and the robots start killing humans and he has to escape I think it's uh, which one I can't remember which one lives I think it's Josh Brolin but he has to right he has to try to escape and he cuts through Roman world in the movie and that looks like this it looks like part of the set of Roman world so it's it's really weird it's so cool how you can see a photo and it triggers something it triggers an event or a movie or a music video right that your brain makes these associations when you when you see an image this on the left is Ryan Van Rompuy um, and this is I think this is puppet warp because there's no way right that her head is it right she would have to be probably seven eight feet tall to, to have this the disproportion of that small head to the body so this doesn't even look like a wide angle it's possible they could have shot that with a really wide angle to get that elongation of the body but I'm thinking this is even too wide for a it's too tall so I'm thinking they went into Photoshop and went into puppet warp Puppet Warp is awesome. You can do some tremendous stuff in Puppet Warp. And I think that's what they've done. I think they went in there and lengthened her body using Puppet Warp. This is a nice photo. I love this model's look. She has a really, really nice look. I like the choice of paper. Right, with these browns. The paper is in agreement with the color. Same here. You have agreement with the paper and the colors. Again, this is when you see these kind of walls right they're all banged up I have said before it can remind you of an island somewhere you know Puerto Rico or uh, Mallorca Ibiza you can just always picture this somewhere some island beautiful really beautiful this is a beautiful image here really well done Hermes now this is <clears throat> regular paper regular paper but the print quality is very high if you can tell they specified a really high print resolution beautifully printed beautifully photographed but it's on it's on thin paper Hermes should have specified a heavy cardstock again with the exacto and you could have put this in a frame really beautifully executed Okay, this image over here reminded me of when Emily Ratajkowski did a shoot and she was wearing this beautiful red summer dress, right? It was a beautiful dress. And then she had on these stupid, ridiculous motorcycle boots. And it's the same here. So they've got her so effeminate in this beautiful white dress. And they got these stupid boots on her the black. Okay, it's just horrible. I don't know what these fashion editors think. Because I, I've said this before, when these fashion editors, if they make one mistake in a wardrobe, it's always the shoe choice. They always use the wrong freaking shoe. And it just, it, it boggles my mind. And I shouldn't say always. Always is a weasel word, right? Always and never. But frequently, let's say frequently, they use the wrong shoe. Okay, 
okay, this is cool. What does that remind you of if you cover her face? That wardrobe. What was that? It's the... They play it at hockey games. Oh, shoot. It's, I think I, you know what I'm talking about. I think her name is Linda. Linda Perry. But maybe if you remember that song, and to this day, I bet she regrets because she started that look with the, like a top hat with the goggles. It's called steampunk, right? Steampunk, she started it, but now it's so cliche and so worn out. And I'll bet Linda Perry, every time she sees that video, she says, oh, my God. <laughs> right? Oh, my God, if I could do that over again, I would have thrown that hat and those stupid goggles away. Right, talk about a mulligan. If I could have a mulligan. Okay, here we had. I've said this a million times. Paul Marciano, guess, best models in the business, and look at the quality of these models. Right, tremendous, tremendous set design, tremendous wardrobing. Right, just absolutely a home run. Everybody involved. Just everybody's talking and collaborating and doing the right thing. Again, notice the background. It's in harmony with the colors. Just tremendous, tremendous work. You can always count on this crew, this creative crew. Whoever, Paul Marichan, whoever he has doing his photo shoots, right? They're just excellent. Okay, we've talked about this before. Swarovski uses way too much jewelry on the models. Way too much jewelry going on here. It looks ridiculous. Okay, here. Now this is cool. This is this is kind of a medium print resolution. It's not the highest grade, but it's it will suffice. And it's it's kind of a medium card stock. But what they've done here, they've ruined the photo. They've taken two sliders, and I'll tell you exactly what they are. They've taken sharpness, pulled it too far right, and they've taken clarity and pulled it too far right. So they've overly hardened this image, right? If that's, It's not really a technically a photography term, but if you can imagine what I'm trying to... They've taken an image and overly hardened it, and it's it's ruined And we talked about this before. This is what Eddie Sleman always uses in Celine. He'll put like a really nice, shapely model in these stupid, ridiculous men's jeans. They look filthy. They look dirty. But somehow this is in fashion, right? Please tell me how these straight, nasty, ugly, dirty jeans could ever be considered to be fashionable. Because I am not getting that at all okay I chose this this is one of the this is a savage paper savage makes this and it's beautiful so if you ever want to shoot a female model I really highly recommend especially if it's a summery type theme right because this is a spring and summer paper you wouldn't want to use this for a fall and winter shoot so you have your model in some type of really bright clothing or some type of beachwear bikini right just a popping color and you shoot against this and you can go to savage's website and find the exact color and it's always got a number savage uses a number to go along with the the actual color but again i'm not i'm not i'm not this is not a paid insertion right i'm this is not a paid thing i'm not compensated i'm just saying it's a beautiful paper by savage if you want to do a spring and summer shoot Okay, I think what I'm going to do... Oh, you know what? I'm going to try to finish this out. Because there's not really a whole lot left. Okay, I've said this a couple years ago. That blue never works for a background paper. And I hope you can see why. Right? This blue is just not working. It never works. It doesn't work for a man. And it doesn't work for a woman. So, I don't know why photographers use a blue paper. It's horrible never works we got more of this stupid blur 
I told you this has been going on now for about five years and they're still using it. So cliche. Okay, the colors. This looks like it was done like in a swimming pool or some type of sauna, right? Because un underneath here is a cement type of thing. And they put these mosaic tiles on here for to resist moisture. So you'll generally find this type of tile in a swimming pool or a sauna. So I'm not really getting this where this was shot. But it, it's just not agreeing. These big tiles, the white, it's really not agreeing with this brown. This is okay. This is nice. This is kind of a timeless portrait. That will never go out of style, this type of portraiture. Let's see who's the photographer. Josh Olins. O L I N S. So he's done a wonderful job here with this photograph. Nice. Nice casual denim look. Nicely done. The only thing I don't like about it though, is you can see that the way the light, uh, if he would have had, so here's, so here's what's wrong with this photo. Okay, the light, it's the way it's hitting her head, face, it's casting these really deep shadows in the eyes, right? And it doesn't, it looks like a skull, right? It doesn't look normal. So when I, when I shoot a model, I would do six poses like this. So what I tell the model is keep the chin kind of level, turn right, turn your face right, give me a head on and turn your face left. Then I have the model, I say raise your chin a little bit, right, because you want the eye, the sun to kind of fill in these cavities, right, and remove these heavy shadows. So if she raises her chin, the sun is going to better illuminate these eye sockets. And I do the same thing with the chin elevated. Turn right, please. Okay, head on. Turn left, please. And I get six shots. And then I go through, and I would see which of the six is the best. And I use the best of the six shots. So so I would really encourage you to do that. Do multiple takes. So, right? And have her do her arms differently. Have her cross her legs, uncross her legs. Do a multitude of shots, 30 or 40 shots. Then you go through, and you find which are the best, right? Here's that hunchback thing again that we saw with Celine and Kaya Gerber. And again, I, I don't understand why photographers tell models to do this hunch. I saw Lin, Linda Evangelista has done this Jean Shrimpton over the years. And it's stupid. It's horrible. That, I don't really care for that photo. It's not illuminated properly. These are really nicely shot. You can see it looks like they shot through a gel. So you have like a pinkish paper. And it looks like you can tell by her skin. They shot her. It looks like they shot her through a pink gel. And it's really nice. It's really working. This over here is cool. I like that. I like the choice of paper. This wardrobe. She's in, well, I shouldn't say it's a wardrobe. It's only like a, a body stocking. But it looks nice. It's it's really well done. Okay, so we're seeing a return of this green paper. As I've said, the two papers now, I can tell by these magazines. Since we've come back from the pandemic, there are two papers that are really in style. Beige, there's a beige or a parchment paper in this green. So those are the two color papers that are really being used th these days. And again, it's a fad. Give it, give it six months or a year, and right, they'll be on to two different colors, you know, two new colors. So here we see the return of the green. And it looks good. It actually works. This is like a kiwi, though, like a light green. Nice. These photos work. I'm not sure about this green, though. I don't think the green is really agreeing with this. And this, there's too much going on. This is too busy. I think this would have been much better if they would have not put so much accenture right or this. It looks gaudy, right? Garish. They're just this is way too busy, way too much stuff going on here. That looks kind of stupid. Okay, 
okay, this is really nicely done, nicely shot, nicely styled. The fashion editor did a nice job choosing this wardrobe. This, I don't understand this kind of bathing cap. You know, what's that about? It doesn't look... I know it's not literally a bathing cap, but I'm talking about the design of it. Just not making sense. And this big slit in the back, it almost kind of like has the appearance of a hospital gown. Right? Stupid. That's really stupid. Okay, and this is Lartigue. So what, what this is, is this is a photographer. This is a contemporary of Richard Avedon. It's not Avedon, but Lartigue was in New York visiting. So you have the photographer shooting the model, and Lartigue is photographing, right, the action. And this was the final shot of what you see here. This is the final image, and Lartigue is just acting as a, a witness to history, basically. He's documenting the shoot. And this is cool, too. I kind of like this, where the, the model is actually kind of like framed. Like if you're visiting a museum, and you would kind of see her in an exhibit, right, just in this pose. And that's really cool, Dior. Okay, so I finished it up right at about 27 minutes. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.